384,000 kilometers, 240,000 miles. That's how far the gray cratered face of our nearest celestial neighbor lies from the planet we call home. And for decades, the moon just hung there. We walked on it once, then never went back. Now, NASA's ready to change that, not with another flag, but with foundations. They want a real city, built from dust, powered by sunlight, and made to last. This time, humanity isn't visiting the moon, we're moving in. But the question lingers, why would we build on the moon? It's cold, airless, sunlight vanishes for days on end inside deep craters. Yet, for NASA, the moon isn't the destination, it's the launch pad. The agency sees the lunar surface as the place to test technologies, logistics, and human endurance, the vital skills needed to go further, to Mars and beyond. This is more than nostalgia for the Apollo era, it's a leap into the next frontier. But NASA's plans aren't just about planting roots, they're about unlocking the future. A city on the moon would completely change how we do science. Imagine studying planets, stars, and even life itself from a place untouched by Earth's noise. Every discovery would bring us closer to understanding where we came from and where we're going. And then there's the race. Space isn't quiet anymore. Private companies, rising nations, everyone wants a piece of the sky. For NASA, this isn't just exploration, it's survival in a new space age. And the moon? That's the next high ground. Not every spot on the moon is created equal. NASA's gaze is fixed on the south polar region, near craters like Shackleton. This region offers two game-changing advantages. First, sunlight. Some ridges here enjoy nearly constant sunlight, ideal for generating solar power. And second, water ice. Permanently shadowed craters trap ancient ice, a key resource for life support, rocket fuel, and even construction materials. Think of a human stepping from a lander, the Earth hanging above the horizon. Below them, a crater glitters faintly in shadow, holding ice older than civilization itself. NASA officials put it bluntly, we're going to have sustained human life on the moon, not just an outpost, but a village. The journey begins with visits. The Artemis program is the backbone of this entire vision. NASA plans to launch Artemis II in 2026, a crewed lunar flyby. Soon after, the first landing missions will follow. And now's come the time for us to make the next giant leap and return American astronauts to the moon, establish a permanent base there, and develop the technologies to take American astronauts to Mars and beyond. By 2035, NASA aims to establish a permanent village on the moon. But between now and then lies a decade of hard work, building the infrastructure piece by piece. Habitats, power systems, logistics, mobility networks. Think of it like constructing a new city on Earth, except your concrete is dust, your oxygen is ice, and your nearest hardware store is 400,000 kilometers away. NASA's approach is phased and methodical. First come short surface missions, each one testing tools, machinery, and human limits. Then come surface bases, gradually expanded by robotic construction crews. Finally, humans will stay for months, and eventually for years. Living on the moon isn't camping, it's the art of survival in the harshest environment imaginable. NASA's lunar habitats will likely begin as inflatable modules or prefabricated shells. Over time, robotic 3D printers will coat them in layers of lunar regolith, the moon's dusty soil, forming natural radiation shields and protection from micrometeorites. Power will come from a mix of solar arrays and small nuclear reactors. Solar energy will feed operations during the two-week lunar day, while compact fission reactors keep lights on during the freezing 14-day lunar night. Water ice from craters will be mined, melted, and purified. It will provide drinking water, oxygen for breathing, and hydrogen for fuel. Every drop counts because on the moon, recycling isn't optional, it's survival. Let's picture life out there. You wake up in a small pressurized room, light filtering through a shielded window. Outside, robotic diggers hum quietly, laying foundations. Earth glows bright in the black sky. You put on your suit, climb into a pressurized rover, and drive toward a solar field, where engineers are maintaining panels under eternal sunlight. And this is exactly how daily life on another world will look like. Every city needs a backbone. Power, transport, communications. On the moon, that backbone is pure innovation. 
By 2030, NASA hopes to deploy a small nuclear reactor capable of powering a cluster of habitats. Without it, sustained life on the moon would be nearly impossible. Next comes in situ resource utilization, using what's already there. Instead of dragging tons of materials from Earth, astronomers will use lunar regolith as their raw material. 3D printers will fuse it into bricks and panels, turning dust into architecture. Then come the mobility systems, massive rovers to carry heavy cargo, robotic builders to construct domes, drones for mapping and exploration, and relay satellites to maintain contact with Earth. And NASA won't do this alone. International agencies, private companies, and startups are all joining forces, turning the moon into a new frontier of collaboration and competition. When NASA talks about a lunar village, it's not just a few pods stuck together. They imagine a functioning community, a place where people can live, work, and experiment long term. The city might begin as a cluster of domes and tunnels, each serving a purpose. Laboratories for lunar geology, habitats for crew, greenhouses for plants, storage vaults for water and fuel. Over time, the base expands. Roads made of compressed regolith connect facilities, solar farms stretch over sunlit ridges, robotic foundries maneuver new tools from local materials. A city where scientists, engineers, and explorers coexist under artificial skies, working in shifts that follow Earth time. A civilization carved into rock and silence, watching our blue planet rise each morning. That's what NASA means when it says city on the moon. It's not just science, it's architecture, society, the beginning of human urbanism beyond Earth. Building a city on the moon is no fairy tale. Every step forward faces nature's cold resistance. Radiation is the biggest threat. Without Earth's magnetic field, astronauts are exposed to cosmic rays and solar flares. Shielding structures with thick regolith or underground shelters is essential. Then there's lunar dust, the enemy of machines. It's sharp, electrostatically charged, and sticks to everything. Apollo astronauts complain that it got into their suits, their lungs, even their food. On a long mission, it could destroy electronics and clog air systems. Temperature extremes are brutal. 120 degrees Celsius during the day, minus 170 degrees Celsius at night. And when sunlight vanishes for two weeks straight, energy storage becomes a survival challenge. Logistics are another nightmare. Every kilogram launched from Earth costs tens of thousands of dollars. Until lunar industry matures, resupply missions will be limited. And let's not forget the human side isolation, confinement, and the psychological toll of living in a barren world. Those are just as real as radiation. The moon is not forgiving. Finally, there's politics and money. NASA's plans are ambitious, but funding cycles, international tensions, and shifting priorities could delay everything. The 2035 target for a lunar village might slip, but even then, progress will be unstoppable. Humanity's eyes are set upward. Why spend billions on the moon when we have problems on Earth? Because exploration changes everything, including the world we leave behind. Every leap in space technology trickles down. The systems designed for lunar survival, renewable power, recycling, robotics, life support will inspire new solutions for sustainability here on Earth. The moon project will also ignite a new generation's imagination, just like Apollo did in the 1950s. The first lunar city will remind humanity what's possible when science and courage align. And there's also a deeper reason. Building a city on another world means ensuring humanity's survival. One planet is fragile. A second foothold, even a small one, gives us resilience against extinction-level disasters. The moon is the perfect training ground for Mars and beyond. It's close enough to reach in days, but harsh enough to test everything, from psychology to technology. It's where we learn to be an interplanetary species. When we build on the moon, we're not just expanding territory, we're expanding possibility. So, here we are, on the brink of something historic. In the coming decade, we may arrive on the moon not just to paint flags, but to stay. A lunar village, a city born of dust and light, a place where scientists map ancient craters, where engineers assemble solar farms beneath an endless sunrise, where explorers stand on cliffs and look back at the blue Earth, our home floating in silence. The next chapter of human civilization, it isn't written in the oceans or deserts of Earth, but on the frozen plains of the moon. And maybe, someday, you'll look up at the night sky and realize someone's looking back. The moon will no longer be a distant dream, it'll be a new home. So, 
keep your eyes on the sky. The next boot print is already being planned. The future of humanity lies not beneath our feet, but 384,000 kilometers above them. If this vision of our next giant leap inspires you, like, subscribe, and join the journey as we follow humanity's move from Earth to the stars.